Hello there, welcome to Overlook Up, where Drinks presents the Council of Bills. We have gathered here together the uh, most influential people on the face of the planet. Myself, Billy, and Mario Bill. We have the power to change the world. We could end world hunger, but today we are dealing with something far more interesting. And honestly, we don't have time to do the other shit, because we don't care. Yeah. Today we are talking about the greatest 80 songs ever created. And since this was a brainchild of eldest Bill, Mario, take away. With this list, we were looking at... Don't start with me, Billy. <laughs> Don't even start with me, Billy. You, you were so serious. You were so serious. People can't see my face. People can't even see my face. It's a mystery to them. This is the way I look like to them. Yeah, that's exactly the one I'm using right now. Uh... So we decided that we were going to sit down take the three of us, three different Bills from three different versions of the 80s, me, the early 80s, Bill, the mid to late 80s, and Billy, the not the not 80s. 80s. <laughs> not 80s at all. And you asked us one simple question. If you could, in your own words, make a top five 80s songs, because we don't want to be here for six hours, <laughs> as you put it, <laughs> what would be your top five? And I just saying, think I said something along the lines of, oh, you're just so mean. <laughs> How can I cut this down to top five? So our list uh, is our personal choice of what the 80s mean to us. Right, Mar uh, Eldest? Yes, absolutely. Okay, and uh, because we are the Council of the Bills, the uh, stronger than the Illuminati, this is, in fact, the greatest 15 songs in the 80s. You can find Definitive. This. Definitive. <laughs> uh, on top of that, uh, youngest Bill, Billy, will be throwing together a Spotify list uh, song uh, playlist to uh, all our songs so you can listen to them on top of all that we have our top five honorable mentions that didn't make the cut and we're just going to go through those real fast uh, any questions comments concerns before we start the uh, council of bills let's let the world know what the 80s were all right so uh, youngest bill yes not, not born in the 80s what are your honorable mentions so my honorable mentions I i'm going to warn you my list in its own right, is I think a little bit the least '80s '80s music that there is. Um, Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, so Perfect. Uh, it's a lot of weird choices. <laughs> uh, I think my honorable mentions are possibly the weirdest um, because my my five honorable mentions. I'm going to kind of shoot through them and talk a little bit, maybe about a couple of them. Uh, but "Blister in the Sun" by the Violent Femmes oh, is in, in my honorable mentions. Uh, "Your Love" by the Outfield which to me became a little more popular after um, Ninja Sex Party put it on their covers album, which forced me to go back and listen to that song a million times. Anyways, uh, Come on Eileen by Dexy's Midnight Runners. I know, I know. Uh, uh, Come on Feel the Noise by Quiet Riot, because one of the best shitty little one-off singles I have ever heard in my entire life. Uh, and my fifth uh, would be Holiday in Cambodia by the Dead Kennedys which oh, wow. caught the late 80s. Um, and that album in itself, I think, uh, Give Me Convenience or Give Me Death, is just like, and that album is ingrained in my brain. Uh, I will go next as I am Speaker Bill, Middle Bill. <laughs> um, my honorable mentions uh, just simply made the cuts because I took this to heart when he said what the 80s mean to me. And uh, my preference was I, in high school, made a three-disc compilation of my favorite 80s songs so God, i had damn. like some 60 songs to cut down and these ones didn't they were close so my honorable mentions is walk this way uh run dmc featuring aerosmith yes uh, i actually prefer that over the aerosmith one it's 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 really great i love that song to death it just it doesn't scream the 80s to me in a weird way i don't know next is dirty laundry by don henley I love this song more than any other Don Henley song. It's a weird beat. It has a real powerful message, and it just leaves me unnerved towards the whole thing, and I, I, I just love it. Um, but again, it just didn't make the list. Once in a Lifetime by Talking Heads was Oof. for a long time my number five. Um, it just had to be cut because of how things turned out. Um, and then Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. 
is probably the greatest Michael Jackson song ever, Fight Me. I don't care. Uh, because everybody knows that Thriller is the greatest album, and therefore Billie Jean is the greatest song on Thriller. Fight me. And then uh, finally is Mexican Radio by Wall of Voodoo. This song was on my, my discs, and it's so 80s, I love it to death. And it, it barely made the cut. It, it, it was so close to being my number five as well that it, it hurt me to cut it, actually. And uh, Eldest Mario... So, with the five that didn't make it for me, like, I, I narrowed it down to a few, and then with the final, like, the five that didn't make it, they all have, like, different little stories, which is what made them close, like, personal stories that made them close, or some, like, that I just love. Like, my number 10 would be My, my Girl Wants to Party by Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Be- because that song, like, if you just, like, can't just get your hips into it when that no. thing comes on, like, it, like I can't not just, like, lose my shit. And there's, like, one Madonna song that is, like, starts very similar. I want to say it's Material Girl. Probably. So I was listening to the 80s radio the other day with my wife, and Material Girl came on, and I thought it was My Girl Wants to Party all the time, and I just, like, start dancing, and then I got so mad when it was uh. Madonna. Don't worry, um, I get that way with uh, Werewolves in London and that Kid Rock song. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, like, Kid Rock. I'm like, hell yeah, Werewolves in London. Fuck you, Kid Rock. My <laughs> next one that didn't make it uh, is In the Air Tonight with Phil Collins. Oh. Because oh. that song is, uh, my mother loves that song, so it's very like emotionally important to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one would be Texas Flood by Stevie Ray Vaughan. Because the first time I heard that, like, I'd never heard, like, deep blues guitar before. And the first time I heard that song, it's like it just kicked me, like, in the dick. I was like, what the fuck is that? You want um, more of it in your life. The song, the next song was the song I was actually listening to when it inspired me to make this uh, idea. And it was Rebel Yell by Billy Idol. Mm. Uh, With a rebel because- yell. Yeah. One of the Council of Bills. There, One of the Council I'm of just, Bills. <laughs> I'm sitting there on the L. I got my fist in my lip, just way too curled. I'm like, ma, ma, ma. It's like, oh, I love this. This is so 80s. What do the Bills think? <laughs> and then my last one that didn't make the cut is Sister Christian by Night Ranger. Sister Ooh. Christian. <laughs> and um, what I love about this song is in college, there was this girl that I was like very casually seeing just for, like, sexual reasons, but she thought it was more serious than that. And uh, she always wanted to slow dance to me, and I always insisted this would be the only <laughs> song we ever slow dance to. So we would always start, because it starts off very, like, Sister Christian, and it is very slow dancey, but then it just, like, motor red, and she would just get so out of it. And then it's like, yeah. oh, we're not dancing anymore? Let's go to the bedroom. Stop going to dance. We're going to dance another dance. I know, I'm so okay. <laughs> Dude, that so those are the five dance. that did not make it. All right, so right now you already have 15 songs of what could have been the greatest songs of the 80s. They'll be on our playlist. Don't worry. You'll get everything. Do it in the comments below. Leave it in the comments below, Grandma from Germany. Don't worry. We love you. Uh, and now we're into our top, the greatest 80s songs of all time. We're going to go youngest, speaker, eldest, five, four, three, two, one. So take us away, Billy. You're number five. So are we going to give a little commentary on it, and yep. then uh, and then everyone else can kind of pitch in the talk? Yep. Perfect. Okay. Uh, for number five, I, I realize the more I look at my list, it, a lot of it came from the late 80s. Um, it's more late 80s music, but uh, off of the album Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, The Cure is Just Like Heaven, which I think is possibly their most overplayed song because it's so good. Um, lyricism in it is amazing. Robert Smith is a weird looking motherfucker, but he wrote Ooh. good music. I think that was really pushing for the youth at the time. Um, how they felt about falling in love, you know, look at uh, Friday I'm in Love, Just Like Heaven. Um, a lot of their songs are, are very love centered. Um, and that weird, like, glam rock shit kind of really gets me in the 80s. So that's why, I don't know, my number five. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the the looks of mix of maybe disgust that I'm seeing, but nope, 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 nope. Okay, no, no strong opinion on it. So I'm just I'm glad that you like it so much. Okay, yeah.
All right. Uh, I guess I'm next. My number five is actually a very personal song to me because it was something I always enjoyed seeing the music video to. I don't know why. Um, it's Sweet Dreams Are Made of These by Earth Mix. Because growing up, I always called it the cow song. <laughs> Wait, what? In the music video, there's random cows in the music video. Oh! So my young self and my brother would always call it the cow song. I'd be like, cow yeah, song. the cow song's on. I love the cow song. <laughs> and even when the radio comes on, I'd be like, oh, it's the cow song. And, and <laughs> again, you'll find a certain vibe with all of mine. They're all new wave. And really, Sweet Dreams is like one of the main cornerstones for me for new wave. So that's, that's about it. I, I, that song just sounds so good too. Yeah, it's like, so like, unique to the vocals and even like that part at the end where it's just like the kick drum mm-hmm. and like her singing. You're just like that song legitimately was my number eleven. It was the last one I cut off. I my wow. Mentions. It just when someone hears like just sweet dreams, it you immediately get it stuck in your head, and I just love yeah. that song for it. And I really like the Marilyn Manson cover of it. Like, yeah. both are good in their own way. Oh, yeah. Like, they're uh-huh. both uh, good in their own way. Like, uh, the real quick thing was, um, my number 11 was um, Blue Monday by New Order. Mm-hmm. And I, I only cut that so far out because I always think of um, the late 90s, early 2000s band that covered it. Like, orgy. Oh. Yeah, Orgy. I just, I, like, I can't separate the two in my mind because it's such a good cover. That's why it yeah. didn't make my list of what the 80s means to me. And yeah. like as good as Marilyn Manson's is, you just can't beat the cow song. <laughs> never, can't, never can't beat the cow song. Can't beat the song. Um, eldest. So when uh, I think of songs of the '80s, this one is so tied into the '80s for me because as a child, like it's very like it's tied very closely to a movie that my mother watched repeatedly. And then it's a song that people play all the time when it comes to really important events in their life. And it's I've Had the Time of My Life by Bill Medley. <laughs> and whenever I hear that song, like, it, like I think immediately of the 80s. And I, it's tied to so many happy memories because it's like, like it's the last song they played like at my high school prom oh, or nice. at homecoming. You know what I mean? Yeah. They play it at weddings. Like it's, it's a song that's always tied to like, such great emotional events and like Mm -hmm. and it's also tied to my childhood like it gives me such like happiness when i hear it that uh that's why i made my number five position number four youngest um so very similar in the vein of i think it was uh speaker bill's uh walk this way love uh Huge fan, number four, uh, from the album Raising Hell, 1986, Run DMC's It's Tricky. Oh, because God. why not? I like, fucking love like, that song. Like, it, that slot right there was a fight between Walk This Way because of the, the monumental nature of Walk literally the first, like, rap rock duo mm-hmm. right, um, collaboration. Uh, that and It's Tricky. And I, I was actually bullshitting with my roommates about this list, and they were like, I threw those two songs up there, like, it's tricky. Because Run DMC is great, and that song is just, that, like, that beat in it just makes you, like, hit the ground. Um, and, and what would the 80s be without some late 80s rap? Like, what would a top five oh, list no, be without dude, some of that? Dude, for real, like, tricky is better than Walk This Way, Run DMC. It is. And oh, totally. The, again, my problem with that, why I didn't make my list, because the first thing that I always go to is that scene from Road Trip. Yeah. <laughs> Every mm-hmm. time I go straight there in my mind, and I'm like, this song is the shit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my number four is... Um, the other stipulation we had, I don't think we, we brought this up, is that if you picked... An artist. You can't put the artist on here ever again. It's a right. one-time deal. So when I came to one of, again, all new wave, one of my favorite artists from the '80s, Tears for Fears, I had a hard time picking one, and I had to go with the one that I will always rock out to, even though it's not a total rock song. Everybody wants to rule the world. Mm-hmm. I fucking love this song, and I'm pretty sure I, I might have it wrong off the top of my head, but I think it was in Real Genius 
Was it in Real Genius? That sounds right. Um, which, Billy, you don't know what Real Genius is. Imagine if Val Kilmer made Van Wilder in the 80s and it had a more oh, 80s that sounds... plot. It is hilarious and it's awesome and Tears for Fears is in it. And it's sweet. And um, I love this song and it was always playing on my car in Saints Row 2 when I was playing it because I love <laughs> this song so much that it just everybody wants to rule the world it is so good and I don't think, it, I, don't think I need to say anything because it just speaks for itself. I had a Tears for Fears song that just didn't make the cut, which was Head Over Heels. Oh, Head Over Heels. Like, again, I was juggling between that and uh, I don't remember the other one right now. Another one of theirs, but I was like, I, was like, I have to go with Everybody Rules the World or I'll hate myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of these albums, or a lot of these songs were like great covers. Like I said, if you haven't listened to Ninja Sex Party's uh, covers album, Under the Covers, they cover Everybody Wants to Rule the World in it too, and it's done really well. And, like I think all the good covers of like 80s music too, how that kind of takes me back to songs. L- Lord did a cover of this, and she does a really unique version of it that was really good. Does she really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's slower and more of a dirge, and it's really good. Yeah. Uh, Eldest, number four. So, um, I li- like like everyone. I like I like multiple genres of music, but for me, like first and foremost, like I'm a metalhead. And there was an album that came out in the '80s that was, and probably remains to this day, my favorite metal album of all time. And like, since it was so influential on who I am and who my what my musical tastes are. I elected to put the title track from that album on here, and that album is called Master of Puppets, <laughs> and that band is Metallica. I, the I knew first time I heard it, I didn't know what Thrash was. Raining Blood was number 11, all right? So, like, Thrash was going to be represented. Um, like, when I heard that album for the very first time, I was just like, what is this? Like, Battery is probably my favorite song on there, but, like, Master of Puppets is so iconic, that's the one I went with. Yeah, and like that, just that whole album, like, is just one like flawless, like if you like thrash metal, I mean, um, and it's so good, and it was so influential that, like, I hate that idea that like, that's when back when Metallica was good, but like it was so influential to like all the like rock that came afterwards. It's so hey, good. And was, Death Magnetic was it. not a bad Metallica album. What, like, was, we'll just forget not, the '90s. I'm not crapping. Wasn't any of this step stuff. back to actual metal instead of hair metal, though? Like, I, I get confused because I didn't take a lot of my, my history, uh, music history classes. But, like, wasn't that the, the, the them trying to cement metal back to where it was supposed to be going? Instead yeah. of this, this pop hair metal bullshit that they hated? Mm-hmm. I mean, th- please tell me if I'm wrong. I'm just trying to remember my, my classes correctly. That could have been that. It could have been Injustice for All. Okay. Uh, so we're plowing right through this. Number three, youngest. Um, so, number three is actually an artist that's been mentioned on someone else's list. Uh, but it's a different song. It's, uh, Billy Idol's White Wedding. White Wedding. So here's the fun, here's the reason why this song is so, is so big to me. I grew up, so not only am I the third Bill in this lineage, but I'm also the third Bill in my actual family. Um, and I grew up, like my dad, I thank my dad if he is ever watching this for... The taste in music that he gave me. Uh, But being young, he'd always be like, hey, this is a Billy. Because I never knew anyone else named Billy except for my actual family. Uh, And he's like, this is a guy named Billy. His name's Billy Idol. And then just, you know, do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. That, like, bass line comes in. and, And I've never been so hyped about a song. And, like, I've never been so hyped about an artist. Like... This, like, crazy dude with, like, a leather jacket and, like, 42 abs, like, fucking belting out huge notes. Like, that shit's so cool. And, like, even to see how he is now, like, he was on an episode of fucking Viva La Bam, and he used a saw to cut through the roof of a Lamborghini, and he's, like, 60 years old. I'm like, how do you, how do you be that cool and that, and have that name? Um, and then I met us, and then I figured it out. Um, We're just awesome. We're bred that way. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so uh, White Wedding, or just Billy Idol in general, but White Wed- Wedding is my favorite song by him. Just had such a big impact in like me growing up at like five years old and like doing like the Billy Idol like rock hands and like singing in my dad's car. Yeah. <laughs> how how many fists do you need to rock? Just one. 
yeah, and that's all you got to do. And that's just like that whole that whole album, like anything by him was fucking great. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, my number three. Uh, this one, it was pretty easy because everything I loved about him was all late seventies. A couple were in the, and I'm gonna catch a lot of flack from people who know music more than I do, but this one, this one is a good one for me. It was again, I don't remember a time where I didn't know this song. It's a lot like the Eurythmics. I just don't remember. I don't remember the first time I ever saw, heard Sweet Dreams. It was just always there, and that is "You Can Call Me Al" by Paul Simon. And uh, I love this song to no end, uh, and I love the music video even more because it's just Paul Simon and Chevy Chase sitting in a room. And Chevy Chase mm -hmm. starts lip singing as if he's singing the song, and Paul Simon just has this look of utter disgust on his face, like Jesus Christ, this is my fucking song. What are you doing? And like he just comes in with all the instruments and starts playing it. And um, again, this this song is so '80s for me. I, I just I, I can I randomly in my head I just start singing it for no reason, and I I just love this song. Like just parts of it of uh, I like I don't remember like. Uh, some of the, some of the imagery he paints is really, really strong for me. I don't know, like the uh, angels and the architect architecture. Um, I can't speak. I'm a few beers in. Um, come on, <laughs> Google Play, pull that shit up. Point. Um, Mr. Beer Belly, Beer Belly, get that ass away from me. I just, I, I, I fucking love this song. I can't. I don't know what else to say. But I just don't. So I'm not gonna. So uh, eldest number three. Um, there's no fancy story between this one. I just think it's the most, like, one of the most universally loved songs that I've ever, that anyone I know, everyone loves this song. And it's Queen, and it's Under Pressure. Under Pressure. Do, 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 Yep. Do, 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 as soon as yeah. I say it, as soon as the hook comes in, it made Vanilla Ice a star. As soon as you hear that bass line, you're like, wait. You, which one is which it? One which one is where it? are we going? <laughs> and either way, we're going great. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just fucking love it. It's got, like, when Bowie passed away, I know everyone who had, like, a really hard time. And, like, I don't have an issue with him. It's just, like, I was never a huge Bowie fan. But, like, this song, you know, everything about Queen, Bowie, it's just so good. Everyone loves it. I love it. That's my number three song. I don't think there's much that needs to be said about it. And if you've never lip-synced or tried to sing a Queen song at full volume... You're doing it wrong. You're doing life wrong. Yep. Under pressure. do <laughs> Um, youngest, number two. This is my most guilty pleasure 80s song ever. Like, I, I listen to this song more than it's probably legal. Um, and I may have once or twice been caught by some old man on the road just, like, fucking jam into this song with, like, hand movements and everything. <laughs> Choreographed dance number two uh, from the album Make It Big from 1984. Whams, wake me up before you go-go. <laughs> if, I, if I had a dollar for every time since, since... So when the Bills started this message about this, I went on Spotify and I downloaded a couple of, like, 80s play hits and that's exactly this <laughs> dumbass dance that Bill is doing right now. It's exactly what I will do in my car while listening to this song and it has been an issue. It's kind of been interrupting my life in a bad way. <laughs> like, how, how fun this song is. Like, I just like Bill, uh, Elder Bill was saying about um, Party All the Time. Like, I don't think you can hear this song and not just be, like, and, like, snapping around to it and, like, yeah, dancing around your room and, like, you can't not dance to this song. Um, and George Michaels in any way. Just uh -huh. on a legend. Um, Wham! Bless you. Um, it was either between that or just just the saxophone line from Sexual, or not, uh, from uh, Careless Whisper. <laughs> I've been singing that for weeks too, and I blame you guys. Uh, <laughs> so that's my number two. My number two had a stipulation that it had to be on this list. Um, otherwise, I'd sleep on the couch for eternity. Um, mm -hmm. I went through this phase before my wedding that my wife calls my Hall and Oates phase. Oh, yeah. And uh, so when we came in at our reception, we walked into this song. And. I might like some other Hall & Oates songs more, like Private Eyes, but this one is 
it really is probably the greatest Hollow Notes song. It's "You Make My Dreams Come True." Yeah. All right. It's just so happy. It's so it's so upbeat and and come on, you've saw Five Hundred Days of Summer. That scene is great, mm-hmm. and it's all because of Hollow Notes. And you might mm-hmm. say, "Oh, Bill, where's Man Eater?" I'm like, "No, no, no, Man Eater, great. Don't get me wrong. You make my dreams come true." Yeah. Yeah. When you say Hollow Notes, it's like there's like five songs you could be picking. So it's like, eh, uh, which one? Are you <laughs> talking, uh, rich girl? Uh, yep. No. You make my dreams come true. And I was like, yeah. is that even the 80s, sweetie? And she's like, 1980s, don't even fuck with me. And I'm like, done, it's on the list. You can't uh, You can't do it. And You can't, like, not walk to that song. Like, if you've ever been walking down the street listening to that song, and you just, like, you got that, like, you got that, just, like, wake me up. You got that, like, little swagger to you when you, you walk. Sw- you, got that, you got that Spider-Man 3 swagger. You got the CBO mm. 2, Don. <laughs> I hate you for that reference. Fucking guys right here. Eldest, number two. So, on this list, I've talked a lot about deep emotional attachments to things related to my mother, but this one comes from my father. So, like, I grew up a child of, like, divorce, so I'd see my dad on the weekend. So, like, my dad was, like, the cool rock star guy, because I would only see him, like, two nights a week. And my dad loved hair metal in the 80s, and uh, in respect to him, I wanted to make sure it was represented here, because I didn't think anyone else would pick any hair metal songs. So I was happy to hear Quiet Riot We got selected. But for me, um, it's my favorite song from my dad's favorite 80s band, and that would be White Snake, and the song would be Still of the Night, Ooh. which is my favorite White Snake song. Like, fuck. Like, when people think White Snake, it's all Here I Go Again, and that song is, like, okay. No, that song is but the like, best. Yeah. But Is This Love is so good, but Still of the Night, it's like six minutes, like, don't, who's, David Carradine, like, Kevin Coverdale hits, like, just the highest, like, his voice is like a goddamn angel, came down and whispered from heaven, there's just amazing guitar solos, it's so self-indulgent and decadent, and just goes on and on, and I love every fucking <laughs> tight leather pants minute of it, just like, <laughs> With Tawny Katane in the music video, Young Will. <laughs> like, I love that so very much. Uh, and that's my number two. And go that's fuck sad. yourself if you don't like it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, like, I'm sorry. I'm like, sorry. Oh, this is the Council of Bills. You have spoken. This is one of the greatest so songs of all time. But, like, these are the definitive list. I don't this know why the, I feel defensive. Yeah, don't feel I like what we're very de- we're very defensive. If you don't like this, you can fuck you can yourself. Fuck <laughs> to, go fuck <laughs> right yourself. Right out of here. Me. Kick, my, kiss me. my ass. I'll fucking kill you. All right. We're into the number ones. Billy. Number ones. Okay. okay. So, I think... I'm sorry, this has already, like, half been mentioned. Um, but I think of what means... 80s music and I think to me what means music in general is how iconic a singer or that said band is Um, and for me this came a lot from I actually think my so I think my dad for most of this music and I think my mom for my number one because I grew up listening to though it came out in the 70s was uh, Ziggy Stardust and Spiders from Mars and because of that my expansive love and Bowie just kind of started to grow yeah and um, it was really weird because I like a couple years ago I just started picking up listening to Bowie again really hardcore from when I was young and I put the song on and I don't know if you've had that experience where you put a song on and you're like I now remember every word to this song mm-hmm. even though I haven't heard it in like 10 years yep. uh I put on Modern Love by David Bowie from 1983's Let's Dance, and every word to that song just came out of my mouth the first time I listened to it. And and to think about how affected I was by David Bowie's death, by how much of a part of he was for me growing up, and I think as much of an artist as he remains to me today, everyone was always like, oh, this is sad that this person died. I still, like... I went and bought um, The Man Who Fell to Earth with David Bowie in it and watched that movie and cried every second that man was on screen. Like, him being dead was a big thing to me. So that's kind of why Modern Love is... I mean, that whole album, Let's Dance, is just a fun album in general, but Modern Love is the big song that sticks out to me. So he used to sing that song growing up all the time. I'm, I'm, glad, 
I'm glad you guys had Bowie on your list because he didn't make the cut of mine, sadly. Hot damn. Yeah. I knew my audience. That's why I made sure to cover myself when I was like, he didn't mean so much to me, but I know I'm talking. <laughs> no, it just, I, come to my ass. I know what's up. When it came to Bowie and why he didn't make my list, because I, I feel like I need to say it, was because the greatest Bowie song to me of all time, and nothing comes close to it, is Life on Mars. I yeah. love that song to death. So it was like, I can't really put Bowie on my list because, yeah, there's Let's Dance, there's Under Pressure, there's Modern Love. I'm just like, I can't get over It's Not Life on Mars. Right. Well, and, and for me, like... No, I'm, uh, my, I'm not my, saying my, your, no, your no, pick no, is no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. I'm saying, like... It's not I'm, say, <laughs> I'm saying, like... It's uh, it's cool that like I like I said I grew up with Ziggy Stardust on vinyl, mm -hmm. like just running in my house all the time. I was singing Starman as a kid, like, and so it was that fun of like getting older and being like, oh wait, this guy did more shit, mm -hmm. and start listening to more of it and how much I think Bowie's just a part of not only mine but everyone's kind of life, yeah. and that's why that song rings so big with me from the eighties. I, I had a hard time figuring out the rest of my list. I knew this was my number one from the get-go um i had a hard time whittling it down i thought to myself oh god should i put this on here should i should i dig through weird al in the 80s to figure out where he should be on here but the one <laughs> thing that was always a staple was number one which is actually on billy's honorable mention list uh -huh. come on eileen Maxie's <laughs> midnight runners because that song could only exist in the 80s that is true that song is yep. so fucking weird on what's going on, and the chanting, and the new wave, and a fucking violin, and the music video is them on a New York street in overalls and no shoes or socks, and yeah. they're singing, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then I listen to the song, mm -hmm. and it is stuck in my head for like the next six years. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's my number one, because it will always be there, and to me, that is like the staple of the 80s of when they were trying to do weird shit. You know, when I was looking up the 80s, like, going through my 80s music and starting to listen to it, I didn't realize how many one-hit wonders came from the 80s. Like, yeah. how many, like, here's a song, and we're gone forever, bye. Yeah. And here's another song, and you're never gonna hear from us again, see you later. Um, it's so weird. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't think there's an era where you see more one-hit wonder bands come and go. Uh, I think the, uh, our new age of pop in the 2000s we got a lot of those that we forget about and, that is true and the uh the house boom in early 90s we had a bunch of them yeah that's not but, real but, music but you you're right because i remember um was it vh1 had like one hit wonders and it was all 80s shit yeah it's all 80s so and come on eileen's just a great song come on eileen is a great song and you can fight me on it but you know what you don't have to because it's definitive list fuck definitive. you Number one of all time, eldest, what is it? So when I said that I was listening to Rebel Yell when I decided this list, um, I was like, I have to make my own list, but I instantly knew what was number one. And I only felt reaffirmed because in preparation for this, I constantly looked up lists online of top songs of the 80s just to see if there's anything I was missing. And in every single list, this song... Number one, number two, somewhere in the top ten every single time. And that's why Prince, When Doves Cry. When Doves Cry. <laughs> the number song, one song of the 80s for me. What, not like, Bad Dance? Not Bad Dance? <laughs> not Bad Dance. That motherfucker, like that showmanship, that, like his voice, just like everything about that song, just oh, it gets me every time. So good. I've listened to it a hundred times this week, waiting for this. Like, it never gets old for me. Like, when he would come to your town and play a show, like, he's leaving town with, like, three more pregnant ladies. He didn't even have to touch them. That music <laughs> just fucking got up inside them, left a princess prince. <laughs> oh, so fucking good. <laughs> can, can I say, I am not... <laughs> I'll, uh, okay, I can't right now. Hold on. Hey, you know what pisses me off? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you a story about Prince. Remember, like a decade ago, he did the halftime show at the Super Bowl. Yeah. I 
Prince lover that I am, I miss that because the party I'd gone to, my friend's mother was there and she got so drunk and kept grabbing my panessis because she was drunk <laughs> that I re- went into a corner and purposely fell asleep so she would like not be date rapey. It's like, oh, you can't grab his panessis because he's sleeping. Like They had to put her away at halftime because she was so drunk. What the fuck is your life? <laughs> Luigi Bill? Yeah. Luigi Bill? Yeah. That was Josh's mom. <laughs> Prince, when doves cry, number one, mother buggers. <laughs> that is a person who, I, who when we lost, I lost my shit. Oh, oh, no more friends. I know he doesn't make any good music and live forever, but now he can't. Oh my god. That was me. Are you speaking in tongues oh. right now? No, I'm just mumbling. That's how I'm tears of mumbling, man. When Prince died. See, I didn't grow up a Prince fan, but that's my favorite Prince song. Yeah, duh. Or Kiss. It's number one in the 80s. Or Kiss. Oh, god nope, damn it. Window subscribe. And that right there are the greatest 80 songs <laughs> ever created. No segue. We just rough straight up. Smug the exit point. Uh, <clears throat> There will be a link below to the Spotify playlist so you can listen to this majesty of greatest 80s songs of all time. Until Bill. next time, the Council of Wait, Bills. wait. Luigi Bill, before you go, this list was a lot of fun. Do we have any more plans to do any more of these? Oh, I was about to say that. The Council of Bill will reunite. Not to solve world hunger, not to end war, but to tell you the greatest 80s movies ever. Uh, Leave it. Council of Bills out.